Uh, hello and welcome to a new episode of the Values Workshop. I have with me a medical expert today, Dr. Sarabjot Singh. Uh, welcome to the podcast, Dr. Sab. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this series, as I've been uh, talking about to you earlier, is called The Other Side Off. In The Other Side Off, I look at different professions and the kind of values that they have to live up to and the challenges that arrive in everyday life. Uh, as a doctor, one of the one of the differentiating things uh, vis-a-vis other professions is the oath that you take when you become a doctor, or that is how I understand it, a Hippocratic oath. How do you how do you view the oath, or uh, what is your personal take on the oath? Do you see it as a responsibility? Do you see it as a as a given? Uh, do you see it as a special status or there is an aura around it or do you look up to it? Is there any daily thought about it? How how do you view the oath itself? Uh, regarding the oath, actually when you decide that you are, you are going to be a doctor. So then at that time, whether you have that oath after you finish off your education or you don't take that oath. But it is the mental makeup already, which is like that oath only. You know that the first thing for you is to treat the patient. For the well-being of the patient, that is your first target. And everything is like a second one. It's all secondary. Your personal life, everything is different. So first thing is your commitment to the patient. So, obviously, the oath is a written thing. It has been there for around centuries, maybe. But uh, from inner self, you know, okay, huh, I have to do this. I have to do it ethically. And uh, you have to serve the humanity. That is your first, That should be your first target. And related other things, like what you have to do, what you don't have to do, they are nitty-gritty things. But basic one is the prime, like... Uh, Objective. The, uh, Objective is okay, the first thing is the patient, and rest everything is behind that. Okay, uh, so my question is a little deeper than that. How do you personally view it? This is the overview. So, in your case, when did you first decide that this is this is a noble profession compared to others? This and maybe teachers are seen in the same light. Uh, how do you view your profession vis-a-vis? Was there any idea that, okay, I can do something else or were you very clear about your line of, uh, the line of profession that you had chosen? I don't know at that time whether I knew everything about it because my parents told me when I started talking and I think I was around two years old, I used to say that I want to become a doctor. So (laughs) at that time, I didn't know what it is exactly like, but that was a decision I had already taken. And over the time, yes, at that time, the things have changed in the last, you can say, 40, 50 years. But that time, the doctors were very revered people in the community. So that was one thing which, like, motivates you a lot. Okay. So from that, you can be motivated that, yes, I want to be like them. So nice people, caring for everyone. And when you go to them, you feel, like, a sense of security. You have gone to this person, so he'll help you. So from has that, there been any time where you felt uh, there is a burden of unnecessary expectations because there is a halo around you in, in the minds of uh, lay people and when they come to you, say for example, you are dealing with a difficult or a challenging or, an, or sometimes an impossible task, a kind of disease that you are unable to resolve but people's expectations are that you can do anything because you are good at your job suppose you are good at your job i'm presuming how do you view that sense of responsibility uh i would say like it over the past so many years since i started my practice or when i was a student i was working at a house surgeon or anything like that so medical profession has seen as very, very drastic change. Very drastic change. 
And uh, initially, I think for the next, it is 32 years since I have been practicing now. Initially for around 15 years, so things were too good, too good. Like people had total faith on you. And yes, expectations are always there. And you always try to live up to them. You would, they knew he would, do, he would do his best to do to uh, help us and everything. And you also felt from inside, that yes, you have to do everything for this person. Whatever the time is, whatever the thing is, like going all out like that. But over the last few years, it is sad to say that the things have changed a lot. Because okay. now expectations is one thing, but asking, asking from a medical professional, but not relying on that person. So oh. things have become like everything, like other fields also, you, you are seeing around you. Everything is becoming now commercial. So it's consumerist in approach. Yes, yes. That has, that has cropped up that, yes, I have paid this person. So I demand this. And Malab, if you, Malab, you don't tell us like you, a person wants, I know, okay, there was a newborn baby, the child was very sick. That I was in the OPD, his father came and asked me, okay, what is the status of the newborn? I said, the baby is sick. But whatever the protocol is, the treatment we are giving, that is the only treatment we are to give. And let's see. So how many days you think okay, he'll recover? Like, you can't predict anything. You are just treating the patient. You can't predict the outcome okay, when he'll recover. So it may take three days. It may take seven days, I can't say. And outside that person was went out and started shouting in the OPD, at waiting area. Okay, what do they, these people think? They are doctors. They don't know anything about uh, the child. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know okay, when he'll be okay. So what is the, why are they working? What is the fun? So all these things are like, now you become a little skeptical when you are taking such difficult cases with you. Earlier we used to be confident because the patients were on our side. His attendants, like not patient, you can say we are dealing with the parents or grandparents. They were with us in treating the patient. But now they are on the other side and we are on one side. Hmm. So that uh, okay, approach is different now. So it is a good uh, feeling. Uh, sorry. Sorry, please. Can you repeat the last line? Yeah. So it is not a good feeling. Yeah. Uh, okay. Long time back, I had some kind of lung infection. This is, I think, 20, 25 years back. And I was sitting with a uh, chess specialist at that point of time. Uh, it was a tricky one, and uh, he used to be, he used to share his concerns or whatsoever. And he had once told me, he says it becomes very difficult to be uh, too close to the patient. Even if you are worried, you, you want to keep your professional face because you tend to see the patients as a pair of lungs <laughs> or a heart or this. He says it helps us maintain our the sanctity of what we are practicing because sometimes you are also uh, so much involved in the patient you are also human there is a rapport that develops over a period of time but it is it is important for us to maintain our objectivity if we are to do our jobs well uh, i am talking about the earlier days obviously at that point if the doctor said jump you jumped you didn't ask the question why or what how do you how do you look at that aspect? Does it, now my question is two pronged. One is, does it give you a sense of uh, power? Did it in that sense, because it is no longer, it is there with a couple of doctors yet, uh, but did it happen with you? And uh, how did you treat that aura? Was it, did it help you become a better doctor or was it an impediment in trying to do what was the right thing according to you? No, I don't think that is the word you used it, it uh, to maintain your sanctity. It is not, I think, maintaining the sanctity. It is maintaining your sanity. <laughs> because if you are too involved with the patient, like the relatives, like you are emotionally involved in that. So the involvement is of two types. One is the physical involvement, but you are treating and everything. Of course, empathy has to be there. I don't say that we should not be empathic, empathetic, 
But the thing is, we don't want to be involved in the emotional aspects because otherwise we won't be able to treat. So yeah. treating and just keeping a little barrier between you and your patients, okay, that you are seeing him as a patient, though as a human being, empathetically, but treating him and not getting uh, emotionally involved. If you know that this person is may go away or something like that, and then you won't be able to treat also. And this thing, once you start treating your patients, whatever you say, it affects you to some extent. If you're sitting, treating a uh, sick baby or something, the baby passes away or after that, it affects you. But all the time, you don't want to disclose to the attendants that you are involved in that way. You want okay. just to keep a little barrier. Otherwise, your sanity is not going to be there. And it affects in the long term after you have practiced for 15, 20 years. If you are really working sincerely with the patients, so it affects to some extent, I think. Okay. This is so beautiful because this aspect has never been seen when one concerns uh, the internal life of the doctors. Uh, would you want to throw some light on uh, how you manage your failures in that case? What happens when you tried very hard and you have invested as much as perhaps the parents in terms of mental time, as much as physical knowledge and your ability to treat someone and you have not succeeded. How do you deal with your failure and uh, what is it that you do to retain your sanity in that case? Uh, I mean by the sense of acceptance or because you need to go on. The thing is, when you start treating a patient and you know the condition or in between also the condition versus or something, actually, uh, it, we are a little bit mentally already prepared for everything. And uh, to do that, you maintain the, uh, your sanity, what I we earlier said. Uh, when you're treating, so you don't think, it, well, I think it is better what I, the approach I believe is, if the patient is becoming okay, he goes home satisfactorily and taking the whole credit on you, that creates problem. And if the patient doesn't get well and taking all the discredit on you, again, the same thing. So here, to some extent, the, your religious approach and your spiritual approach, that comes in between where you say, hey, huh, I am doing, but he, the God, He's is doing. making do it. I am just a medium. I'm a medium, he's getting it through me, but I'm not doing everything. I have tried my best, but if he doesn't want the patient to survive, I couldn't do it anything. I, of course, you feel bad when you lose someone, but then also again, that emotional bondage has is not to be there, which I earlier told you. So only then you can survive those times. So blaming the God, blaming God that he is not well is also bad and taking the credit yourself when the person is right, even that is not good. So keep it Balance. his will. You take it as his will. So that is the only best way to go about. Okay. Uh, one little amusing question comes to mind. Uh, we are a little older and a little more sensible, I would say. Uh, but in my younger days, when I look back at my own profession, there was a lot of arrogance and cockiness in my ability to do things. Uh, have you also seen a change in your uh, being more empathetic, uh, more compassionate and more balanced in your approach vis-a-vis uh, -vis your practice? Uh, as a younger person, were you a little more, oh, look, I can do this, I can do that and I can make it possible. When you did not have the sense that you talk about now, was it the case or were you always very clear that, no, this is the approach? No, I don't think there has been a change vis-a-vis -vis my age or experience. Because actually when you start your own practice, you have already been with the patients for the last 10 years because our studies are quite long. And during the studies, we are dealing with the patients. So that phase of arrogance and everything, I think that goes away. Baki, it depends on your own nature also. The yeah. thing is, what I told you, if you believe it, okay, God is doing something, so you are not that arrogant. Na? Because mm -hmm. if it's in hand up, people come and say you like, and they say, okay, aapke mein baut shafa hai mm -hmm. so if you start bloating like anything, ke, main to ye kar raun, then it is wrong. Na? You should see ke, he's like, you are treating and he's making ke, the person is, person is getting well. 
तो इट इज नॉट दैट शफा बट इट इज गॉड्स विल ऑल ऑल ऑफ अस आर वर्किंग वेरी हार्ड सम आर वेरी सक्सेसफुल सम आर नॉट बट दैट डजेंट मीन के आई एम मच बेटर देन दैट ऑल ऑफ अस आर स्टडिंग इन द सेम वे एवरीथिंग सो इट इज गॉड्स विल दैट एवरीथिंग इज बिकमिंग ओके सो बट द थिंग इज के दिस एम्पैथेटिक फीलिंग एंड ऑल दैट थिंग इज रादर लाइक आई थिंक इट इज गोइंग डाउन लिटिल बिट आई मे से फॉर माई सेल्फ ऑल्सो एंड फॉर अदर कुलीग्स ऑफ माइंड हु आर लिटल ओल्डर आई थिंक वी वर मोर एम्पैथेटिक अर्लियर then now reason being that doctor patient relation has gone really sour in the last few years so the when we are sitting across i'm not like generalizing that everybody is like that but the first time your patients come to you so there is always a suspicion is his mind you must be knowing you have to be talking around with the friends or all those things the patient is very skeptical when he is coming to you whether he'll treat me ethically or no how much money he wants to earn from me in what way by giving more of tests or what things like he doesn't have full faith in you and you i'm sitting on the other side you are always afraid ki how this person <laughs> behave with me is a child the patient is not getting well or something it comes into his mind so that like thing has gone very very sad which is not a good thing how do you how do you ease your mind in this scenario what is it that you tell yourself to go on your job and do it with all fairness and full effort irrespective of what is happening uh, uh yeah i that way like because we have been brought up like that and we have studied like that from our teachers were like that so we have decided ki yaar we can't change ourselves matlab going with the way like the people are doing now or something like the things are changing everything commercially and all those things but we can't change we have to go our own way but obviously we are just like that if the patient doesn't want to come to us or he says something we will say yeah you can consult someone else you take a second opinion so you don't get too much involved in that way you know i have to treat and why it is so happening so like we have created sort of barrier you can say if we don't get those feelings now if someone is misbehaving little bit or something like that so we are just now ignoring but if you say ke ha things are like that so i have i'll have also with the passage of time i'll also have to uh, like do away with my ethics or go the way the world is moving so that is not possible for us because from the beginning things have been different and we can't change so i am having that approach only ke i have to do my best but the rest whatever is doing it's okay okay uh okay on a on a skeptical note uh, not so much about you but in terms of uh, a lot of doctors are guilty of treating uh, this profession as a business uh, as is true of all of the professions uh, there are good people and bad people in every sphere of society how do you how do you view that is contributing to this uh, cause of distrust if i were to use the term distrust is a huge term but i think it's very oh if i don't like you i go to another doctor there is this doctor hopping doctor shopping if you want to call them call it that uh, how do you view this uh, considering the fact that you resolved it for yourself but as a phenomena that is entered the society do you think there is any way to uh, resolve this at all no i don't think so we'll be able to resolve it because it, the commercialism or everything has crept into the society on the whole it is not the only yes. thing like a doctors clinic we would say and it's not anywhere else so the make up of the society has totally changed so mal i would say like i am very fond of seeing movies so you go to see the movies you see movie of now and you see a movie 30 years back rishikesh mukherjee or something you will see the change in the society so that way we will not be able to change it okay the only thing is ke you have to draw a line ke now things are like this but what i have learned and what i have been doing now i'll go my own way patient doesn't want to come to me it's okay if he wants he is coming he is satisfied it's fine but i am not going to do anything to satisfy him which is not ethical for me so so that That's i want for line so 
बाकी डॉक्टर हॉपिंग हैज बीन देयर अराउंड फॉर द मेनी इयर्स इट्स नॉट नाउ आई रिमेंबर ए पेशेंट कमिंग टू मी आई थिंक इट वाज अराउंड 20 इयर्स बैक तो एजुकेटेड पर्सन तो ए केम एंड पुट डाउन फाइव और सिक्स प्रिस्क्रिप्शंस बिफोर मी कि आई हैव गोन टू दिस डॉक्टर दिस डॉक्टर दिस इज आई हैव गोन टू सेवन डॉक्टर्स सो नाउ आई हैव कम टू यू एंड आई लिसन टू एवरीथिंग हिज हिस्ट्री टेकिंग एंड एग्जामिनेशन एंड रोट डाउन द प्रिस्क्रिप्शन एंड हैंडेड द प्रिस्क्रिप्शन टू हिम मैं कह नाउ आई एम द एट्थ वन After that, you can go to the ninth one. Also, there is no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, okay, Anna. Again, since the, now the line of question is questioning is moving towards the social uh, outlook of things. Uh, I, as a communicator, am quite alarmed sometimes and worried and. trying to think what as a generation we can do to make the next generation at ease with their little things uh, i find mental health has become a far bigger issue than it ever was uh, how do you as a medical professional see a solution to this talking to uh, medical experts when one has depression and anxiety and stress and all those lifestyle worries what is the problem according to you and what is the solution according to you because it's it's now far more rampant and kids who are hardly 20 are now getting into that zone of uh, i think lack of meaning lack of purpose i do not know what to call it and sometimes i'm wondering what is it as a generation we can do to ease it as much as possible so you can speak as a medical expert first or even as a person of a similar age how do you how do you look at this phenomenon actually as medical i think the there are two type of problem with the generation with the small children also now who are going to be young adults in the near future so we take it to be the one group only yeah so there are two problems like uh, one is at home the other one is in the peer pressure outside the uh, home when they are in the school or maybe in their college or go make out with friends whatever so there these are two places where there is which uh, which is causing lot of stress like peer pressure you can't totally change you can't ask your child to choose his friends like that but uh, i think the most important thing is like parenting so i feel in my field because i am dealing mainly with children so parenting has gone for a toss which is causing a toll which is causing lots of problem i think i but whenever whatever time i have i and if the patients are little receptive because some to they start arguing and then i leave it here just take the medicine and go away if they are little receptive i try to like tell them and convince try to convince them because if you want a better society you have to start at home the first thing is your ch- your child should accept no and no no when you say no he should understand that yes somebody can say no to me and i am not going to get this thing so these days the thing is that maybe parents have don't have that much time or like money has become the first thing and everything so they just want to keep their children happy with whatever they want rather than disciplining the pers- uh, the child and telling him the values so they don't don't want to like lose their time on that so which is causing the problem because i tell them like now you tell them ke you know, they'll say that this he doesn't do this i said ke then you don't allow him to do this he eats so many chocolates me you don't buy those chocolates for him it is you na but then he cries me okay what have, what have, what is the problem let him cry for some time he should understand ke my parents have said no so it means there is some problem why they are saying no no they are affording so if you don't let your child accept no at this time the thing is when they start moving about at around 15 or 20 years of uh, after this age so when a boy says no so he kills him these are the causes of more and more murders and if a girl refuses he is going to rape her so this is the basic thing na that they don't want to accept no and when it started maybe he when he was one year or two years old 
it is not that earlier children were not like that. You used to throw tantrums, maybe 30 years. We also, I think, used to throw tantrums. I asked the parents, why didn't you do this thing? Because they say that we were really afraid of our parents. There is not afraid. You knew that your parents won't meet, uh, like accept your unjust demands. And that is a way to improve the society. You inculcate those values. You tell them money is not everything. Material things are not everything. You have to be good. So it's based. I believe is the first thing is the parenting. Secondly, if you get a very good teacher, sometimes they can influence you a lot. Very, they have got a big contribution. But I don't know now schooling is also a little different. There are 60 children, 70 children in a class and everything is like going around. <laughs> this is the syllabus, you have to cover it and everything. But there's no personal touch with the teachers. And that is again caused by the parenting because if a teacher, I know we haven't seen so many news daily. If the teacher scolds a child, he tells and goes at home that he told me this thing and he hit me or he reprimanded me not only hit him. So they'll go and start fighting with the principal. Okay, why did your child, uh, your, the teacher uh, told this to our child? He's no one. We know our child is good. So again, the parenting. So Max, if you want to change the society, you have to change the parenting. I don't know how it can happen, but this is the yeah, only I, I agree with you. Very often, of late, I think I've been spending a lot of time and uh, my Mine is a far more uh, non-negotiable one on that, that I think kids are never bad. It is just parenting that has not sorted out the issues in time. Uh, more or less, I think very similar on these grounds. Uh, okay, one uh, little question, maybe the last. Uh, going back to what you were speaking about, in terms of earlier and now, uh, has the enjoyment of serving the people lessened for you? because of present times or are you still as passionate and uh, love your job as much as you did earlier uh, in terms of, because you cannot take away the fact that you're a human being and the parent or whoever is struggling and saying things to you is still a second part between the patient and you, you know for sure that you want to heal, uh, help the person heal and come out of their disease. Uh, has the passion still uh, retained itself or is it, because are you skeptical inside is the question, honestly. Yeah, to be honest, definitely it has decreased now. Reason it being, we as humans, we are, yeah, it has decreased. That well, passion has decreased, that uh, like sense of fulfillment has decreased now. So the to do everything, go all out has definitely decreased now. And uh, I think that is because we are not superhumans. So earlier, when you like used to treat the patients well, and you that was acknowledged by the parents. Where, where, uh, wherever they used to meet us, they used to give good regards and everything. Because it is not the money. Mon yeah. earning, money uh, uh, like uh, earning the money is not a problem for anyone in any profession. Medical profession was moving about in, with the steam of this respect in the society. Yeah, it was not the money. Industrialists, all those people, they have much more money than the doctors. Average doctor who is working like in a reasonable yeah, yeah. way. Yeah. But it was the it was the respect in the society that was like always moving us ahead. And somehow, like I don't say that is not a generalization earlier. I told you there are very good people also who still regard and everything. But overall, that percentage percentage has gone much down. So that is why, like, like you feel, okay, it is not worth working that hard and that motivatedly. So it's okay. You should, well, I told you, okay, ethically, we don't want to harm anyone. We'll try our best. But uh, I would I'd like to do that way. But that that motivation has gone down. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. To be very sincere. Well, I was hoping that this would be a positive end to this uh, wonderful chat. But I think it is a positive end in the sense of there is honesty of approach and uh, you've been very kind to share your innermost thoughts. Mostly I find people uh, or even professions that had halos around them. Uh, things are being challenged. Uh, 
on both sides obviously there are a lot of people who need to do work on that thankfully my own approach is uh, i trust the doctors whoever i have had to visit at any point of time whichever faculty they may be allopathy homeopathy ayurveda whatever i have had to visit them because i find it is the environment that you create with the doctor with the healer who is putting in effort he is not one uh, one more businessman even if the setups have become like that there are huge hospitals they are given a lot of talks about doctors being being given uh, margins and stuff like that but that is that is prevalent in all other aspects of society as well i find most people if you are honest and if you are uh, open to suggestions doctors on the whole are definitely trying to ease the burden of disease in every aspect so thank you on behalf of all the patients to start with uh, because very often we forget to say that uh, we take it for granted that you are going to always be the best we can behave as as we want doesn't work like that uh, that is one and thank you for being a guest and sharing your thoughts on this show it was a privilege and i would still ensure my other uh, patients the people around that like still doctors are really working hard and really doing yeah. their best obviously like things are Both different side, yeah. has got kind of crept up but still overall we can say that even if someone is earning more money but he's still working hard and nobody wants to harm the patients so that is one thing which is which is not going out of this profession wonderful wonderful yeah. on that note thank you so much I okay see. most welcome bye bye bye